Dan, Spider-Man's been with us for, what, some 25 years now? He's been crazy yeah. about Mary Jane for many, many years, too. Why did you decide now that they should get married? Oh, just look at this couple. How could you keep them apart longer than 25 years? <laughs> Anyone who's watched this channel for any amount of time probably knows how much I love Spider-Man. From the moment I saw the opening title sequence of the 1994 animated series for the first time, the Web Slinger has been one of my favourite comic book characters and still remains so to this very day. Although this fondly remembered cartoon may have been my first exposure to the story of Peter Parker, the piece of Spider-Man media that truly made me fall in love with the hero was Ultimate Spider-Man, the modern retelling of the hero's origins published in 2000 thousand created by the team of Brian Michael Bendis and Mark Bagley. Ultimate Spider-Man is, in my opinion, one of the best long-running comic series of all time, and it's unsurprising that I was beyond excited when it was announced that Jonathan Hickman would be reimagining the world of Ultimate Spider-Man as part of Marvel's launch of a brand new Ultimate Universe. The original Ultimate Spider-Man series exists in a fairly interesting place in the wall crawler's history. In many ways, you could argue that this series exists to rebel against the status quo of the mainline Spider-Man books. In 2000, the notion of bringing Peter back to high school and focusing exclusively on a younger, inexperienced Spider-Man in a world already populated by X-Men, Avengers and other costume crime fighters was almost unheard of and led to a really interesting new take on not only Peter himself but the cast of characters that surround him. And now in 2024, Hickman's Ultimate Spider-Man book seems to want to achieve the same goal but by doing the opposite approach. This Peter isn't a plucky teen still finding his place in the world but instead a mature short adult with a family, married to Mary Jane Watson and the father of two children. This creative choice to introduce an older, married Spider-Man into this brand new universe comes with a lot of fascinating context, as Peter and MJ's marriage has had a contentious and turbulent history ever since the two characters were wed back in 1987. With their marriage being controversially retconned 20 years later in One More Day, and many fans even now still demanding and campaigning for it to be restored. And so, in this video, I want to explain the history behind Spider-Man's marriage to Mary Jane, discuss the editorial factors behind its creation and eventual retcon, and explain how Hickman's bold reimagining of the friendly neighbourhood superhero may be the dawn of a brand new era for the amazing Spider-Man. Before we continue though, just a quick reminder to leave a like on this video if you enjoy it, and subscribe to Owen Likes Comics so you don't miss out on any future videos. In 1987, a momentous occasion took place in Marvel Comics, when two of its longest serving characters were united in holy matrimony. In the pages of Amazing Spider-Man Annual Issue 21, fans would see the long-awaited marriage of Peter Parker and Mary Jane Watson. Now, the story behind how these two characters were wed is interesting. Although the duo had long romantically been linked in Spider-Man comics, the driving force behind this decision would come from a completely separate series. You see, in January of 1977, seeking to capitalise on the success of their comics, Marvel launched a daily Spider-Man newspaper strip that would tell serialised continued stories set outside of their main continuity. In order to add prestige to the series, Stan Lee would serve as its writer, working alongside a slew of artists, including John Romita Sr., Larry Lieber, and Fred Kidder. These strips remained popular with fans throughout the 1980s, and in 1986, Lee spoke at a panel at Chicago Comic Con alongside Marvel's editor-in-chief at the time, Jim Shooter. It was here during this conversation that the notion of Spidey getting married was first floated. As Jim Shooter recalls, At the Chicago Con in 1986, Stan and I were among the guests. He was scheduled to do a one-man panel. He asked me to do the gig with him. We didn't do any presentations, just took questions. I think 9 out of 10 questions were about the comic. Comic books. Toward the end, someone in the back asked Stan if he was ever going to let Spider-Man get married. 
a lot of people in the crowd voice support. Stan said that it was up to, quote, Marvel's entire editor. And right then, right there, in front of all those people, Stan asked me if I would allow Spider-Man to get married. So Stan and I talked about it. He thought having Spider-Man get married would be a great thing for the newspaper strip. We agreed that it was important to coordinate the comics and the strip so that the event would take place in the same week of the same month and in the same way as much as possible. Intrigued by the potential of this idea, Lee and Shooter embarked on a joint endeavor to bring Peter and MJ together in both the comics and the syndicated strips. Lee would build up to the couple's marriage in the daily edition of the strips, while Shooter tasked Amazing Spider-Man writer David Michelinie with penning a special comic book that would feature the hero's long-awaited wedding. Now, this process proved to be incredibly challenging, as attempting to line up the schedules of the two series, as well as working within the constraints of each's continuity, led to many headaches behind the scenes. Stan Lee would later note that, There is no way I can explain to you how difficult that was, because the comic books are written two or three months ahead, and the newspaper strip is written a certain period of time ahead. To synchronize the two was almost impossible. Also, the Spider-Man strip had one storyline going on, and in the newspaper strip we had a totally different storyline going on. And in order to make them sort of come together so there'd be a marriage, well, it was the toughest thing creatively that I think I have ever done, or the people at Marvel had done. Despite these early stumbling blocks, Michelini, Shooter, and artist Paul Ryan and John Romita Sr. crafted a heartfelt and sincere story that brought two of Marvel's biggest characters together. In the pages of Amazing Spider-Man Annual Issue 21, readers would witness the marriage of these two Marvel stalwarts, as Peter, backed by his best man Flash Thompson and best friend Harry Osborn, triumphantly walks down the aisle and within two fateful words is married to Mary Jane. The Spider-Man wedding was a huge moment for Marvel, both within their comics and syndicated strips. Seeking to obtain as much publicity as possible, the company even held a real-life wedding for these two characters at Shea Stadium in Queens in June of 1987. This event, held before a New York Mets baseball game, saw an estimated 45,000 people in attendance for the ceremony, officiated by Stan Lee, and with such acclaimed guests as Captain America, the Incredible Hulk, and even the Green Goblin. Back on the printed page though, with this new status quo now established, Marvel's attention quickly turned to putting Peter and MJ's love to the test. Jane DiMatteis and Mike Zeck would tell one of the darkest Spider-Man stories in their six-part saga, Craven's Last Hunt. This tale would see Craven prey on an increasingly vulnerable Peter before burying him alive in an attempt to prove himself to be the true apex predator. Throughout the story, we see the strain that Peter's heroics and battles with Craven have on his marriage. And once he's buried alive by the villain, MJ is forced to search for her missing husband before Peter, through the sheer love of his new wife and their future together, drags himself back to the surface and defeats Craven. If Craven's Last Hunt proved to be the first test of the marriage's fortitudes, Marvel would continue testing it over the next several years, while simultaneously telling stories that question the identity and role of Spider-Man now as both a husband and a seasoned superhero. In 1988's Amazing Spider-Man issue 300, this question of identity would culminate with the introduction of Venom, a brand new villain who existed as both a dark mirror of Peter and paralleled the hero's growth in humanity in contrast to the bitter Eddie Brock and his alien symbiote. And then, only five years later, Marvel Comics would put Peter's identity to the ultimate test, telling a now infamous story that would not only shake up the Spider-Man status quo in a way even bigger than the wedding, but would also provide a possible way for this decorated hero to have a happy ending. Despite being conceived with good intentions, the Clone Saga would eventually unravel, instead opening a Pandora's box of retcons and controversial changes to the web slinger's long-standing mythos. By the start of the 1990s, Peter Parker and Mary Jane Watson had been firmly established as Marvel's power couple, with their marriage withstanding the likes of Kraven, Venom, and many other Spider-Man villains. But while the pair's bond remained unbroken, Marvel Comics began to consider how this new status quo was affecting their various Spidey comics, with some within the company believing that Peter's settled home life was actually to the detriment. Roger Stern, who wrote an acclaimed run on Amazing Spider-Man throughout the early 1980s, 
before returning in 1996 to pen the Hobgoblin Live story arc, discussed this himself, stating that, Spider-Man doesn't quite feel like Spider-Man to me anymore. It all seemed to fall apart when he got married. I'm not saying that I would never have married Peter off, but I wouldn't have paired him with Mary Jane. She worked best as a spoiler, an old girlfriend who would occasionally appear to mess up Peter's life. She and Peter really cared about each other, and they had some good times together, but they were like oil and water. When I wrote the Hobgoblin Lives limited series, Peter seemed different to me. It was like running into an old friend that you knew in college. He had changed and wasn't as happy as he used to be. I guess he just had a lot more on his mind. With these internal concerns in mind, and with the company seeking to devise a storyline that could rival DC's Death of Superman, Marvel embarked on crafting one of the most polarizing comic book arcs of all time. Although longtime fans will likely shudder at me just mentioning the Clone Saga, I think it's worth noting that when this story was first conceived, the intention was to do a soft relaunch of the Spidey titles, while giving Peter and MJ a chance to ride off into the sunset and introduce a brand new version of the titular hero. You see, when the Clone Saga was first devised, the plan was to reveal that the clone of Spider-Man, who first appeared back in Amazing Spider-Man issue 149 from October 1975, had survived the events of his debut story, and recently returned to New York under the new name of Ben Riley. However, in Spectacular Spider-Man issue 226, it would be revealed that Ben was actually the real Peter, and the Peter that we'd been following since the mid-1970s was actually the clone. This revelation, coupled with MJ becoming pregnant, would cause our Peter to leave New York and retire as Spider-Man, with Ben taking over as the protagonist of the main Spidey comics, and would enable Marvel to once again write stories with a younger single version of the hero. The thought process behind this twist was best explained by Terry Kavanagh, one of the lead writers on the Clone Saga, and the person credited with first pitching the story. He states that, as the writers grew older and got married and had kids and got mortgages, we sort of wrote Spider-Man that way and wrote him away from our audience. This was a way to get him back to the essence organically without divorcing him, which would just give him more baggage. This creative decision proved to be incredibly controversial, and due to fan backlash, these plans were eventually changed. Instead, in December of 1996, the Clone Saga concluded with R. Peter returning, following the loss of he and MJ's child, and Ben being revealed to be the clone after all, with this entire storyline explained as being orchestrated by Norman Osborn, who had been thought dead since 1973. Although the Clone Saga was a deeply divisive story, one still being fiercely debated by fans to this day, it did represent an opportunity for Marvel to pay off the decision they made a decade earlier, and give this beloved couple the opportunity to have a happy ending, something rarely achieved in mainstream serialized storytelling. However, due to the controversial nature of how they went about doing this, and fans' lukewarm reaction to the Clone Saga, this one song for Peter and MJ proved to be short-lived, and in its place, Spider-Man entered the new millennium on uncertain ground. While Peter did remain the one and only Spider-Man, questions still existed both within and out of the company surrounding the marriage's longevity, with the opportunity to tell sweeping retcons now seemingly unlocked due to Ben and Norman's resurrections. These questions would bubble up to the surface over the next 10 years, all eventually culminating in 2007 on one fateful day. If the 1990s were a decade in which questions were asked about the longevity of Spider-Man's marriage to Mary Jane Watson, the 2000s would see their bond be put to the ultimate test. Following the end of the Clone Saga, Marvel killed off Ben Reilly and restored Peter to being the one and only Spider-Man featured in their comics. But as the status quo appeared to be slowly returning to normal, the web slinger would have one final revelation waiting for him before the new millennium. In Amazing Spider-Man Volume 2, Issue 13, from November November 1999, MJ would be seemingly killed in an airline accident. Although she would be revealed as alive in issue 29, instead being captured by an unnamed stalker, these experiences would lead to the two separating. The split between Peter and Mary Jane coincided with the rise of two important figures within Marvel Comics. J. Michael Straczynski, an acclaimed writer best known for creating the TV series Babylon 5, who signed an exclusive contract with Marvel in 2001 and immediately took over writing The Amazing Spider-Man, 
Hoffman and Joe Casada, co-founder of the indie publisher Event Comics, who alongside Jimmy Palmiati had spearheaded the popular Marvel Knights imprint, before being appointed as the company's new editor-in-chief. These men are crucial to understanding the story of Spider-Man's marriage and its downfall. Straczynski, working with artist John Romita Jr., inherited the comic at a time when Peter and MJ were separated, and instead of immediately bringing them back together, decided to focus on exploring new corners of the hero's mythos, with Peter now working as a teacher and encountering the likes of Mo Lun and the Inheritors. Nevertheless, Straczynski would reunite the couple in Amazing Spider-Man issue 50, with them and Aunt May moving into Avengers Tower after Molten Man destroyed their home in Queens. Peter's close proximity to the Avengers at this time would coincide with the launch of Brian Michael Bendis' new Avengers comic, as well as the company's upcoming crossover event, Civil War. Civil War is important here because it leads directly into the dissolution of Spider-Man's marriage, with Joe Quesada being the driving force behind the couple's separation. You see, similar to conversations that occurred throughout the 1990s, Quesada believed that the character had somewhat lost his way in recent years, and by restoring Peter to his more classic status quo, they could revitalise interest in Marvel's flagship hero. Quesada had long sought to remove Peter's marital status from continuity, and the opportunity finally arose in the mid to late 2000s as Mark Miller and Steve McNiven's Civil War would see the friendly neighbourhood superhero shockingly unmask himself to the world. With the Spider-Man mythos now blown open, and Straczynski set to leave the Spider-Man title in the coming months, Quesada assembled a writer's room to craft a storyline that would spin out of Peter's identity being revealed and culminate with the disillusion of his marriage to Mary Jane. As a result, One More Day, a four-part storyline spanning all three ongoing Spidey titles, was formally announced in February 2007. Quesada was set to draw the series, while Straczynski would write it as the conclusion of his six-year run on the Spider-Man comics. However, while Quesada's desire to erase the marriage from continuity was well documented, the writer seemingly expressed hesitation. In a December 2007 entry on his blog, Straczynski revealed that, there's a lot that I don't agree with, and I made this very clear to everybody within shouting distance at Marvel, especially Joe. I'll be honest, there was a point where I made the decision, and told Joe that I was going to take my name off the last two issues of the One More Day arc. Eventually Joe talked me out of that decision, because at the end of the day, I don't want to sabotage Joe or Marvel, and I have a lot of respect for both of those. As an executive producer as well as a writer, I've sometimes had to insist that my writers make changes that they didn't want to make, often loudly so. They were sure I was wrong. Mostly I was right, sometimes I was wrong. But whoever sits in the editor's chair, the executive producer's chair, wears the pointy hat of authority. Despite these internal disagreements, One More Day unfolded throughout late 2007. After an assassin hired by the Kingpin shoots Aunt May, Peter desperately searches for ways to save her life. After being rebuked by Doctor Strange and Tony Stark, the hero is confronted by the demon Mephisto, who offers to restore his aunt's health in exchange for giving up his marriage to Mary Jane. Faced with no other option, the couple both reluctantly agree to this deal, sacrificing their love and memories together in exchange for May's safety. In the pages of Amazing Spider-Man issue 545, these two iconic characters share one final embrace together and bid farewell to the life they had built over the past 20 years, as the comic fades to black and the world is forever changed. One More Day would conclude with the reveal of the brand new Spider-Man status quo, as Peter wakes up with no memories of his previous life, greeted by Aunt May. After leaving the house, he arrives at a party held for Harry Osborn, who had previously died in 1993. Peter and Harry toast to new beginnings, as both a brand new day and a brand new era dawns on the history of Spider-Man. Following the events of One More Day, a new chapter of Spider-Man's history began, one defined by the erasure of his marriage to Mary Jane Watson. As a brain trust of writers including Dan Slott, Bob Gale and Mark Guggenheim mapped out the hero's new status quo as part of their brand new day initiative, Joe Quesada attempted to fill in the gaps of Peter's canon in the 2010 storyline One Moment in Time. Told throughout Amazing Spider-Man issues 638 to 641, this story flashes back to the original wedding from 1987, but sees Peter no-show due to a surprise encounter with a criminal. This change in events causes MJ to call off the 
wedding altogether, and although the two do later reconcile, she is shot following Peter's public unveiling in Civil War. Unlike previously, Doctor Strange does agree to help, healing Mary Jane and casting a spell that will cause the entire world to forget that Peter is Spider-Man. As Strange begins to cast the spell though, Peter changes his mind and attempts to make sure that MJ will remember. Although this does work, when MJ wakes, she explains that they can no longer be together for her safety, breaking up with Peter seemingly for good. With this retcon establishing the backstory of the Brand New Day era, Dan Slott, who officially took over writing the hero's flagship titles in 2008, attempted to swiftly move on from this controversial period, focusing instead on establishing brand new villains and allies. Slot's run would see Peter encounter the likes of Mr. Negative, Silk, and Anti-Venom, begin a relationship with new character Carly Cooper, and start working at Horizon Labs. Perhaps the most notable part of Slot's four-year run, though, would be the Superior Spider-Man event, a year-long storyline which saw Otto Octavius switch bodies with Peter, with the former Doc Ock taking over as the wall crawler until Peter is able to regain control of his body. Although Slot's run is notable for adding many new and distinct elements to the Spidey mythos, many fans at this time still long for the return of Mary Jane and the couple's marriage. The two characters did briefly reconnect before the Superior arc began, but they wouldn't formally reunite until Nick Spencer took over writing Amazing Spider-Man in 2018. Spencer's time on the series would see Peter and MJ largely remain together, with Peter even considering proposing to her during the Kindred story arc. However, the writer's run would conclude in late 2021 with the return of Mephisto, in a storyline that heavily referenced the events of One More Day and even retconned the equally controversial Sins Past. However, even though the marriage wasn't restored by the end of Spencer's run, Peter and MJ's bond seemed unbreakable. This would quickly change though, when Zeb Wells was appointed the new writer of Amazing Spider-Man. Amazing Spider-Man Volume 6 Issue 1 sees our hero kneeling in a crater, screaming out in pain as the comic asks, what did Peter do? The book immediately jumps six months later, where we see how much the Spider-Man status quo has dramatically changed. Peter and MJ are no longer on speaking terms, with the hero also falling out with both the Avengers and the Fantastic Four. Throughout Wells and artist John Romita Jr.'s run, it would be revealed that an encounter with a villainous emissary saw Peter and MJ be stuck in an alternate dimension, where they encountered Paul, a scientist and the son of the main god of mischief, Wayeb, who was building a device to try and escape this reality. After fighting Wayeb, MJ uses the device to send Peter home, trapping herself in this other universe as a result. With the help of Norman Osborn, Spider-Man is able to build a device to rescue both Mary Jane and Paul, stealing part from the Fantastic Four in the process. Meanwhile, for MJ, four years pass in the other dimension, with her falling in love with Paul and adopting two orphan children before Peter teleports to their world and brings them home. This saga came to a head in Amazing Spider-Man issue 25, where Paul is hospitalized after he and MJ are brought over to Earth 616 and MJ confronts Peter in the hospital. Here, Peter notes how only a month ago to him, the couple were happy and even planning to move in together, but MJ declares that she cannot leave Paul and walk away from this new family she's built. Given that this run is still ongoing, I don't think it's entirely fair to assess this storyline until it's fully concluded. However, it is worth noting that many fans have vocalised their displeasure about Peter and Mary Jane's separation, responding to a fan letter published in Amazing Spider-Man issue 35, which claimed that Marvel had failed to let Spider-Man develop in the years since One More Day. The series editor Nick Lowe responded by stating that, We get fan mail, but we certainly don't get a lot of mail about One More Day. That came out 15 years ago. From my POV, you're overstating the vast majority thing. Most months, we don't get any letters about One More Day. When we do a story with Peter and MJ, we sometimes get a dozen emails from fans who want them married again, like you. We get more letters from people talking about other things altogether. Lowe would follow up these comments when responding to another fan in issue 39, claiming that most readers have moved on and that fans shouldn't hold their breath for One More Day to be undone. While there has always been a vocal subset of fans campaigning for the marriage's return since its erasure back in 2007, this sentiment has appeared to gather momentum across the fanbase in more recent years. Even though the comics have largely depicted Peter as no longer being with Mary Jane, the success of the animated Spider-Verse films, which feature an older Peter initially divorced from, and later once again with Mary Jane and a young daughter, and the Insomniac video games, which focus heavily on the couple's relationship, has seemingly incited a demand for these two characters to be reunited on the printed page. 
In addition to this, numerous alternate universe stories such as Renew Your Vows and Spider-Man Life Story have shown that there's still many interesting Spider-Man stories to be told, with Peter as both a husband and potentially a father. Nevertheless, it has seemed in recent times that Marvel has been at loggerheads with a portion of its fanbase, refusing to compromise on the decision they made 15 years ago and preventing one of comics' most beloved couples from once again being together. With tensions rising as the recent Spider-Man comics become more and more polarizing, it felt like something would eventually have to give. And then, at the beginning of 2024, an unexpected lifeline was thrown from a faraway corner of Marvel's vast multiverse. As the dream team pairing of Jonathan Hickman and Marco Tuchetto unveiled their all new and reimagined Ultimate Spider Man. In February of 2023, Marvel Comics made a rather unexpected announcement, breaking the news that Jonathan Hickman would be returning to the company following his departure from the X-Men titles two years earlier to pen a four-issue series entitled Ultimate Invasion, which would serve as the relaunch for the company's once popular Ultimate Universe. Alongside artist Brian Hitch and colorist Alex Sinclair, Hickman told a sweeping story that introduced readers to Earth 6160, a brand new reality, one much like those that we're familiar with, but irrevocably changed by the villainous The Maker. In the present day, we discover that the Maker rules over this world with none of our traditional heroes around to stop him. Reed Richards serves as the Maker's servant, clad in a Doctor Doom armor, Howard Stark is Iron Man, and the likes of Captain America, Thor, and Spider-Man are all nowhere to be found. The first issue of this four-part series, which sees the Maker travel to this new reality, concludes with a flashback to a 15-year-old Peter Parker on a school trip to a science lab. The sequence initially seems like something fans have seen time and time again, as a spider escapes its enclosure and attempts to bite the teenager. However, the maker intervenes and prevents it, signalling the different path that this brand new universe would be travelling down. Ultimate Invasion and the follow-up one-shot Ultimate Universe outline the status quo of this new continuity. Tony Stark, the teenage son of the original Iron Man, and Reed Richards discover the way the world is supposed to be without the Maker's intervention, and begin a quest to restore all of its heroes. This leads directly into the events of Ultimate Spider-Man Issue 1, written by Hickman with art by Marco Cicchetto. First announced back in October 2023, anticipation for this new series has seemingly been at a fever pitch. Not only was the original Ultimate Spider-Man series, which ran from 2000 to 2011, a seminal and beloved take on Marvel's flagship hero, but the premise of this new comic seemed to resonate with a disillusioned portion of the Spider-Man fanbase, as Marvel revealed that this version of Peter Parker would be introduced as in his 30s, married to Mary Jane Watson and the father of two young children. Just from the slew of variant covers released by the company at this time, which all prominently featured the tagline, Meet the Parkers, it was clear that this book intended to differentiate itself from the current Spider-Man status quo on Earth-616, and try to offer fans the alternative that they had wanted for some time. Now, this isn't to say that Hickman's Ultimate Spider-Man book is pure fan service, though. Although the first issue does introduce us to this married Peter Parker, the comic adds an interesting dimension with the reveal that due to the maker's machinations, he was never bitten by the spider as a teenager, and now 20 years later, never grew up to become a superhero. Instead, Peter works at the Daily Bugle alongside both J. Jonah Jameson and Uncle Ben, before the two abruptly quit to start their own publication. Ben and JJ's decision, coupled with the reveal of Aunt May's recent death, causes Peter to experience a crisis of confidence. Throughout the issue, he expresses disillusion with his life and feels that he is destined for something greater than what he currently does. Whilst his home life is stable and he is both a good husband and a father, this version of Peter clearly yearns for purpose and excitement, something that culminates at the end of issue one, where Tony Stark appears and offers Peter a choice, regain the life that was stolen from him and obtain powers now, 
or choose to continue living as a civilian. Ultimately, Peter chooses the former, and with the encouragement of both MJ and Uncle Ben, the comic concludes with Peter allowing the spider to bite him, as readers turn the page to reveal him wearing a prototype Spider-Man costume for the very first time. In my opinion, Ultimate Spider-Man issue 1 is a tremendous comic book, a deeply personal story by writer Jonathan Hickman, and a fascinating commentary on the state of the web slingers stories in recent years. For those unaware, although Hickman today is one of the most celebrated writers in comics, penning acclaimed runs on the Avengers, Fantastic Four, and X-Men, his entry into the industry came somewhat later in life. After graduating college with a degree in architecture, Hickman worked in advertising and art direction for much of his 20s and early 30s, despite having dreams of making it as a writer. Hickman's first published work, the six-issue comic The Nightly News, was released when the writer was 35, the same age that Peter is depicted as throughout Ultimate Spider-Man. However, while I do believe that Hickman injected many of his own feelings and lived experiences into his depiction of Spidey's world, it would also be difficult not to read this first issue as a reaction and commentary on the current state of Spider-Man's comic books. In a way, Ultimate Spider-Man as a series has always existed to be the alternative, a radically different take on the friendly neighbourhood hero in contrast to the established status quo seen on Earth 616. In the year 2000, when the book was first conceived by Brian Michael Bendis and Mark Bagley, Peter had been married in mainstream comics for 13 years and was largely written as a man in his late 20s. As such, their version of Peter would be firmly rooted in high school, introduced at the age of 15 and never reaching adulthood in the book's entire 11 year run. Run. The fact that Ultimate offered such a different status quo to the other Spider-Man books is a massive reason as to why the original comic is so revered and was so successful, and it feels as if now, two decades later, Marvel have attempted to replicate this approach with their new Ultimate title. At a time when the company seems adamant that one more day will remain canon and Peter and MJ are firmly separated, Ultimate gives readers the chance to have the other option, where Peter is allowed to age, be married to Mary Jane, and raise a family together. By doing this, Marvel has quite smartly managed to appeal to both sides, offering one book that depicts the couple as separate, while another that depicts them as happily married. For me personally, my introduction to Spider-Man comics came at a time when the couple were married. Even though Ultimate Spider-Man was my gateway series, I remember being so surprised picking up Amazing Spider-Man for the first time to discover that this version of Peter was far older, working as a teacher and married to Mary Jane. In hindsight, I realised the variety of stories that this approach offered, and I think the success of Ultimate Spider-Man's first issue and the excitement surrounding the series as a whole demonstrates that there is still a lot of interesting and unique tales to be told with a married Spider-Man. As someone who is a huge Jonathan Hickman fan, I'm firmly rooting for Ultimate's success, and I'm looking forward to seeing how its plot unfolds and impacts the broader conversations about the future of Spider-Man comics. While the debate surrounding whether or not the hero should be married remains ongoing and will likely continue for many years to come, I think it's positive that readers can now choose which types of stories they're interested in reading. And whichever way that sentiment falls over time, I hope that Marvel truly learns from this experiment and charts an exciting future for this beloved character. Although Peter Parker has had a turbulent history over the past 30 to 40 years, one full of retcon status quo changes, and fierce debates within both editorial and the fanbase, the future seems bright for this iconic superhero. And if issue one of Ultimate Spider-Man is anything to go by, I for one can't wait to see what this future has in store. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to leave a like on this video and leave a comment down below as well. Let me know your thoughts on everything we talked about in today's video. I can't wait to hear what you have to say as always. If you're new to Owen Likes Comics, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notify bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And if you enjoyed this and you want some more, there should be some other videos on screen right now that you might also enjoy. If you want to help support the channel and help me make more videos, you can go to patreon.com slash owenlikescomics or click the join button at the bottom of the screen and sign up as a YouTube channel member. Or if you want some more of me, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram just at owenlikescomics. But that's all for this video. Again, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I will see you next time. But until then, take care and keep reading.